Hello again. Welcome back to European Autocraft Studios. Uh, we're here back inside the 944 Turbo. We're going to get this wiring harness out today. Uh, so no diagrams today. We're just going to focus on getting this uh, harness out and uh, how it's routed throughout the car so we can um, reference that when we go back to put this together. Uh, maybe we'll have another car then uh, by then to reference as well because this one's kind of messed up. Uh, but one other thing, I just want to give you an update on uh, what's going on with the storm down here. Uh, looks like Fifth Avenue is starting to open up, the real ritzy part of Naples. Uh, downtown, the homes that are damaged and flooded is just incredible. The, the amount of car damage. Uh, a lot of my customers won't be coming back with their cars, which is kind of sad. Uh, a lot of them are underwater, underwater up to the dashboards. Just awful. What a mess. Um, on another note too, we want to, uh, we're enjoying this so much, we want to do more videos. Um, we want to do videos on some of the other projects we're doing here. Uh, we do quite a bit of stuff. Um, we really like, uh, really like the Porsches, the old Porsches. I also have uh, some other cars you've probably seen in the shop that we might start to highlight a little bit, but not on Saturdays. Saturdays is the day for the 944 Turbo and all of you guys that have supported us for so long. Uh, we're going to keep that going. So this car um, this car will be every Saturday. We're going to do the uh, suspension rebuild, everything, bushings. We're going to tear everything that came off the car apart, clean it and restore it, and then uh, reassemble when the car comes back. So you'll be a part of all of that. But we want to expand and do more. Uh, we love the subscription rates going up. I think today we're at 541. Uh, very impressive. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Um, and I'm going to try to stop saying um. I say um a lot and okay. Okay, um, all right, so let's get started on getting this harness out. We have it out from the back. Uh, you saw all that coming, it was just pretty simple going back there. We have the door harness disconnected from the connector up top. That'll come out of the door another time. We'll probably take the door off or, I don't even know if the body shop wants us to take the doors off. Uh, we'll talk to him first. But I do want to get the harnesses out because they're gonna probably give this a dusting of paint, clean it all up so it looks nice and fresh again. So we'll get that out of the door later. But now we have, are we finding more ground points too? We're gonna to show you later. Uh, let's see, stuff that doesn't belong, all that's gonna come out. We're gonna get rid of some of these zip ties. We've actually taken some photographs as well, uh, as well as the video footage that we have. So when things go back in, we know where they are. If you don't route this properly the first time, Every harness run that runs off of the main uh, is going to be in the wrong place. So we want to really get this right. So we already documented all of that. Hopefully we can show you some of that as we go. Let's start by removing some of these. And this one, this is from the factory. I don't know what this connector is. I have to look at it. But it's probably from uh, an accessory that is not installed in this car. Porsche was good about putting harnesses in um, for accessories. I don't think this car has cruise control, but that's too small for a cruise control connector. But I want to find out what that is. Um, let's see. Uh, we have, these are really neat zip ties. I don't know if I can get them from my supplier. I might be able to. That they go on a, um, they go on a threaded stud that you can see over here. And uh, they're actually reusable. With a little lever here, you can push down and release the uh, serrations here so it comes off. We're going to save those and hopefully get more. What else do we have here? Um, another one there. I'm going to take these two ground wires off. This is the uh, one of the ground points. I don't know the number yet. Uh, okay, so I did check on the grounds. Uh, we had a little break there. Um, this is ground point two right here. And the one further forward, which we get to it, um, it's going to be ground point three. That is way up in here. That's the one, uh, it's right on the back side of the fuse panel. Oh, what's left of the fuse panel. If you watched the other episode when I brought that fuse relay panel to its knees, uh, that's on the list of things to put back together too. We have to clean and sort of restore that. So these are going to go special place here uh, let's see. I'm gonna put 
these just back in here temporarily. These are real fancy little little screws. They bite really hard. A lot of surface area it gives it a nice nice bite for the ground. And we'll come back for those. All right, what else we got here? We have another zip tie. That is uh, and here, maybe you can see it, right here, this is our ground point three. So in the wiring diagram, when you're looking for ground point two and three, two and three is forward here. I'm going to try to get those out. These can pull off with a, with a hook tool. They're not that strong, but... Um, if we're able to unscrew them, that's even better so it doesn't tear up the plastic. Just minor, minor little details. Okay, Our connectors, these should just push off to the side. They might need a little help. Well, they're locked in pretty tight. So, maybe what I'll do is just pop the cover off the connector housing. This actually, this connector housing is broken. You can see the break in it. So we'll get a new connector housing. Those are still available. Now we're just going to pop these off. See, and we can leave the, um, we'll leave the cover there, but we'll come back for those after. Uh, and there's the back of the connector, and you can see it's broken off here. But since we have some great wiring diagrams, we can put those right back together. Um, I'm going to put some tape around those so the wires don't come out. Give us a... so it doesn't get too messy. Okay. All right, okay, we're getting there. What else do we have here? Uh, I think that's a door lock control unit. Somebody's tapped into this probably for some uh, alarm system to activate the door locks. More aftermarket stuff. This is that antenna booster. I think we saw this before. But the interesting thing is this car has an antenna booster and it's right there, that black box on the side there. That is an antenna booster. So we don't need two. All right, here we're gonna. Oh look, I love these. Wire nuts. No, no, no. Makes me very sad. Wire nuts in the car. These are the instrument cluster connectors. Still in pretty good shape. That one is. Uh, a couple switches. Um, dash dimmer. Fog light switch. around over the steering column. Terminal, this is the uh, signal switch that tells you that the key is still in. When you release the key, this one's pretty messed up, but you hear the click, that click also turns off that switch uh, inside the lock. Hmm. All right, so we'll take this out. I've never had to remove an entire wiring harness from a car before, uh, from a Porsche before. So this is kind of this is new to me too. Uh, one of our relay sockets from up top. This is that extra wire. 
Look at that. That cut rest spliced right in there. We have enough wires. We don't need you to. Uh, these go through. These go through the firewall. This one. was added after the fact. I'm rattling this one. Okay. So this group of, this group comes from uh, the engine compartment. This group goes across here and to here and this is our center console okay. what a mess. Okay. okay now I think I'm going to lower the steering column to get this out I think that's going to be the best bet that shouldn't be too difficult um, brake light switch Uh, it has one regular bolt here and one tamper proof. So I'm going to have to drill this one out. Um, they have some tamper proof bolts. Sometimes they've already been taken out if there's been some service work done and, and normally people don't put the tamper proof ones back in. Um, Anti-theft. I'm going to have to drill that out and then I drive an Allen uh, socket into it. Or a Torx bit, they bite really well, and in a, in a, you know, when you drill a hole, you can drive it right in there and take that out. So I'm going to get that set up, and we'll be right back. All right, we've got our tools set up here uh, to take out this uh, tamper-proof or uh, security bolt. They call them all kinds of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a center punch in the uh, punch it. I'm going to drill it with an eighth-inch drill bit first as a pilot hole, and then I'm going to find the one that'll fit my Torx bit that I like to use. It's one of our less than expensive torque set um, and I use it for all kinds of weird things besides using it for torque screws so let's see if we can get it since I'm half blind it's hard to see the center okay it's gonna be a little noisy Oh, so much for being in the center. I can drill a hole in anything. It just isn't always where you want it. So even though I center punch it, it still slid off to the edge. But let's see what happens. Go up a little bigger. This chuck doesn't grip very well. Okay, we are 100% not straight. But let's see if we can get that. Probably made that hole a little too big. Just drill the head off. Just to weaken the head, and we'll just break it off. Oh, mayhem. I didn't want to do this.
if I had just drilled it straight, this would have worked just fine. Since it's so far off, I'm trying to drill into the core of the bolt. That's an eight millimeter bolt, so I have a little ways to go, but I'm hoping it'll weaken it enough to break it off. Definitely try to drill straight. This is, uh, this is not good. For those of you skilled welders out there, you could just weld a nut to it. Um, I'm really not set up to do that very well here. Well, that's the head of it. It vanished. I really didn't ever want to see it again anyways. But now the top will come right out because there's no more pressure on it. I'll have to get it out through the bottom. Okay. That's that. Okay, well that's just a regular bolt. We have a shim. It's amazing that they use such a thin shim. I mean, does that little bit of a difference, does that really make that much of a difference whether the column is up a little bit higher or not? I don't know. I don't know if it's there for the uh, universal joint down there to keep it centered. It must be, they must have a, a certain specification that that has to be at. Because really, that's not very thick. All you engineers that are watching me are probably laughing. You can't even drill straight. Oh my god. No, I can't. That's an honest truth. I bet if Anthony was here, he could drill it straight. tab that's folded up. Just bend that down. This harness has not been out of this car since it was brandy new back in 1985 was the production date. It's an early 86. We have another um, harness connected. It goes up, and I don't know where else it goes. Okay, I think that's our windshield wiper harness and outside temp sensor, or oh, that's a um, ambient air temperature implant now that's inside the air box so that's the in, inside of the air box probably evaporator temp let me go outside and take a look all right well that wire um the se separate harness that branches off goes up through the uh firewall up to the up through the top here and goes to the windshield wiper motor connector uh the blower motor this is the uh, temp sensor we saw inside that goes in the plenum, uh, probably evaporator temp or one of the duct temperatures. Um, I keep saying, um, dang it. And some other stuff here. Uh, yeah. So, we're just going to remove, I don't want to break these. And there's a windshield wiper one. That uh, might not make it down through. Okay, we just had to get some other uh, legs of the harness down in there and then the whole connector will go right through the hole uh, with the grommet out. So that's good. Okay. That'll make it too. So I'm going to go inside. No, I might not have to. All gone. 
I'll leave that and we'll come back for that later. Okay, back inside the car and we'll finish taking this out until we get to the other side where it comes through, but we'll get it on that side and then go from there. Okay, so we uh, were able to get that little little uh, harness down through the the uh, bulkhead here, the fire where the firewalls are and right through the bulkhead. And now I have to feed it up and over up and over the shaft that that holds the brake pedal, the, piv the brake pedal and the clutch pedal pivot on. This is a pivotal moment. If you can pull the easy ones through first, so it gives room for some of the more difficult ones. The key is not to rush. And just take your time. This this thing drilling this out, I was just rushing, and I and I drilled it crooked. It was stupid. Um, See, so yeah, I was off to the side, but we're able to get it out, but unnecessarily too difficult. So don't rush. Make lots of mistakes. Okay. So we're gonna get this back up in there. Uh, throw a few bolts couple of bolts back in that. <clears throat> it's upside down. Yes, it is. Quick change. Look at that. He can go in lefty or righty. As you can see, I didn't go through all of this to make sure this went smoothly. Uh, just going along, trying to find everything. This is this one? This one. I need to bury my tools. These are another type of, uh, they don't have a zip tie, but they go down over the stud and then it locks in. You can put it in any position you want. I know those are available. So that one must be for the seat motor. What is that? Probably for the power seats. There's a, there's a battery cable in the car. It belongs out there. All right, we're moving right along here. Oh, there's the, this is the connector that would be on the back of the ignition switch. Uh, remember I had mentioned before that the connectors are labeled. That has every, uh, every wire attached to it. Uh, and it tells you where it goes, where you can see it right on the wiring diagram for testing purposes. This one came apart pretty easy because there was no back cover on it. It's supposed to be a cover. Um, and when I pulled it off, it just fell apart. Well, we can fix it. All right, I'm going to come on that side now and take care of the rest of that. Uh, I think I've got everything over here now that's coming with us. And we'll lay all this out on the on the ground and uh, get a better picture of how it's laid out in the car by by laying it out on the ground. Okay, see you on the other side. All right, welcome to the right side of the car. Uh, we are now at the final end, I think, of this one. Hopefully, a um, couple little strays. I hope we got everything. Uh, this one, this wire goes to the door pin switch, so I'm gonna have to take that off. Luckily, I have my longest screwdriver I could possibly find. And remove that. I 
think we'll get new booties. Oh, these are in pretty good shape. This one is anyways. A little booty's in pretty good shape. Probably clean that up and reuse it. Uh, this is not doing anybody any good. Okay, so here's that. This is the antenna booster we mentioned earlier. This wire goes directly up to the windshield. I spoke to the glass guy that's going to remove the glass for us and asked if he can save that. We might end up putting a new windshield anyways. It's got some pits and chips, but um, we're going to make him try to save it anyways, just so we can see. Uh, we'll get that on video, uh, him removing the windshield, see how he does it. Uh, a lot of times I've seen uh, the dealership world anyways over many many years you'll see certain cars they just start to rot out around the windshield and that's from when they cut the glue out they scrape the paint and don't do anything about it and it just sits in there where water can get and uh, it just eats through it and rots through the body of the car sort of unnaturally these cars don't rust on their own uh, because of that special dip they use uh, that galvanizing dip so if you see rust around the windshield, that's why. So we don't want that to happen. So let's remove. Uh, this works better than my wire cutters. And that. Okay, this um, is a power signal from the. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a power signal. This is the the lead from the windshield. This is, well, that's why he added another booster. Huh. Well, this one um, is the antenna signal to the radio, and that's the trigger. This is what turns on the antenna. This would be probably uh, the antenna output that would put up your power antenna. Instead of a power antenna going up and down, it turns on the booster. Uh, let's see, so that's a single wire, so this is obviously grounded, and as you can see by the bolt, it's another one of our ground bolts. So we're going to put that back, because we're going to make sure that we put all the ground bolts, the special bolts, back where they belong. I kind of like that. What do we got here? We got one more clamp there. Okay. There we go. Now, the harness is free. Yeah. Anyways. Harness is free. Now you get to see even more of the carnage and destruction here. If you can look underneath, you can see the homemade. You probably can't see that here. But we'll get another shot of this later. Uh, this is a false floor here. This is all rotted away and somebody added to it, you know, along with the floor. Oof. Can't wait till Mr. Body Man sees this. But for now, uh, we will remove the harness from the vehicle. Porsche never used this stuff. This is aftermarket, just FYI. I thought I was going to make a slick exit. No slick exit for me. Okay. Anybody else? Now I can make my slick exit. Look at that. Not so slick. There's the main harness. We'll lay that all out real nice next video and uh, get back in the diagrams just a little bit and show you where everything is. Uh, 
and we'll remove a lot of the aftermarket stuff and see what we need to do to repair it. We have one more harness to take out. That's the one that comes up here uh, and it'll go through the firewall on the driver's side. The left side will round all that up and pull it through and we'll get that from, uh, from the inside as well. Alrighty then. Okay, uh, now on the front of the car, we're gonna remove the harness that comes in uh, on the corner we showed you in the beginning. That's still in the car. The main one is out. This is like a, an engine harness. So it's not even an engine harness, I think. It's more lighting, um, starter, alternator, stuff like that, fan, fan harness. Uh, so we're going to start on this side. We have our crusty old battery cable. Uh, we're going to start there. What's nice is everything's made to come apart. I don't have to cut any wiring except the, the um, aftermarket wiring. That's just uh, extra. There's a cluster of four millimeter wires. I don't know what else is hiding in there, but I believe, if I remember correctly over the years, that these are split into two and go on either side of this. Somebody moved them over and then just used the other stud for their uh, stereo or all the other crap that was in this car. So much crap I don't know what to make of it all right now that's the ground we're going to disconnect the the chassis ground uses the same same connector just so another cable runs over to the body and then the uh, and then this one bolts to the back of the bell housing Top of the bell housing, not the back of the bell housing. That's a ground bolt, but it doesn't look any different than uh, any of the others, so nothing special there. At least the grommet here is still nice and pliable. That's good. Um, here comes our ground. One big ground cable. This goes to the body, and this one goes down to the bell housing. And then our positive battery cable. I think we can clean these up. Ooh, well, yeah, we can clean these up. That burn didn't go all the way through. That's just the outer covering. So we can fix that with our harness. That grommet's not going to make it. Yikes. Okay. There we go. So these are all going to go through this big hole here that has a grommet, I think. This is our uh, alternator slash starter. This one goes to the back of the alternator. It's supposed to have an air duct on it that goes around this. And there's our other end of that cable. That also goes to the, what does that one go to? That goes to the back of the starter to uh, enter to charge a battery. So the starter, the battery cable, everything's all connected. We'll see more of that when we go back together. So that one. Now, get that lined up to go out the hole there, and we have this one. This is our windshield washer, headlight motor, ignition coil, quite a variety of stuff over here. And we have our ground on the longitudinal over here that we, we saw last time. Ground 
the bolts. Yeah, just broke the clip off. Kind of brittle. Alright, now we're going to come around the front and just disconnect it across the front here. It's just held on with these. I'm not going to bother unscrewing them. Light connector, grounds, and these are for the pressure switch on the receiver dryer. And these were, I believe, for the uh, fan switch with the thermal switch. That has to be converted to a pressure switch for the uh, 134 refrigerant. But that's for another day. What else do we have here? Now these being in the engine compartment are uh, pretty pretty dirty. Ugh. to disconnect the horn. Oh, these boots are very, very crusty. Yikes. Also for the horn, we'll get new boots. These are like little boot rocks. I uh, guess I should have taken that off, but we'll get that next time. All right, there's our grommet. And our connector for underhood things. Which way is it going to go? I think it's going to go this way. I like that these grommets are still pliable. Get it started. No. All right, we're just going to spray a little soap on it. That should help it slip on through. My little screwdriver I was using, I'm afraid, was going to puncture this, which I don't want to do. Nice if you have a second person on the inside to help guide this through, but through the fuse panel isn't too bad. If 
Yeah, since this car does not have cruise control, they use this cute little cover over it and uh, lock it down. So it's out here, but it's not being used. If it was used, the cruise control motor has a connector that plugs right into this. So we'll put that back on when it's through. So those of you that have cars that do not have cruise control, if you get all the parts, you can connect them without having to worry about changing the wiring harness. It's already there. Cooling fan harness. Connectors. I actually have new ones of these. Now, let's see if we get everything off of that one. All right, moment of truth. There it is. Here is that one. So there's the electrical system inside the 944 Turbo really dirty. We're going to clean all these up, um, take out all the aftermarket stuff, lay it all out nice, and we'll get a good picture of it. But well, that'll be next time. We'll also have the wiring diagrams up. We'll point to a couple a uh, couple different things here and there and um, sort of get familiar with the diagram and the harness. And that's it for now. So uh, we'll see you next time. We still have to take the rest of the stuff off the car, little peripheral things, fuel lines, brake lines, before we take the suspension off and put the uh, framework underneath. I have a framework coming for it. It's a used setup that uh, a friend of mine has. We're going to try it, see if he can make brackets to make it fit under the car so we can put that on wheels. And everything else will come off, and we're almost done uh, getting it ready for the body shop. So stick around. We're getting there. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like it. Uh, comments. I love the comments. You guys are keeping me on my toes. Uh, we'll go back over some of the comments next time. Uh, we'll go through a list of some of the things. Really cool stuff. So see you next week. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.